Welcome back to Education Matters. Did you correctly guess D, real estate? Um, after lawyers, the next most common profession in the North Carolina Senate is real estate and then insurance. Uh, we're going to continue our focus on the freshman class with two of the new Republicans that are joining the General Assembly, including one of those insurance men um, uh, from the Senate. Senator Jim Bergen, Republican, District 12, you represent, you got a pretty um, broad district, Harnett, Johnson, Lee, I think, I know that includes, what, Sanford, Lillington, yes, Benson, sir. and all those areas, so welcome and congratulations on you. Representative Chris Humphrey, District 12, Lenore Pitt, I think that's Kinston, LaGrange, I think are a couple of the places people might know. Yeah. So um, thank you. And just, and just so I mentioned the insurance, Senator Berg, and I'll start with you. Uh, you, you do have, you're the owner of C&D Insurance, so, uh, and you're replacing Senator uh, Rabin, who retired yes. um, after three terms. All right, well, you just you heard the, um, uh, the, the freshman uh, Democrats that came in, and I really wanted to talk to you all about um, education. Um, you spent time campaigning last year. I'll start with you, Senator Bergen. What did um, um, you hear from parents, teachers, the community about education if you were to get elected? But they want to have choice. They want to be able to decide whether their kids are in public school, charter school, home school. And, uh, and I talked to a lot of teachers while I was out campaigning. And, and the number one thing that they're concerned about is, is, is school safety and the amount of paperwork that they feel like they're doing that, right. that really doesn't, uh, they don't see the benefit of some of it. Right, what about you? Same question to you, uh, Representative Humphrey, uh, um, as you campaign, I should mention, you, uh, you defeated uh, an incumbent uh, three-term Democrat Representative George Graham. It was a redrawn district, but just to give people the backstory on how you got here. What did you, um, as you were campaigning, education, I think folks know the General Assembly has a tremendous amount of uh, influence on local schools. What did you hear from your yeah, constituents? The same thing as Senator Bergen. Being from a rural district, uh, school safety was huge. Uh, you know, our schools in, in Lenore County and south, southwestern Pitt are older schools, so we haven't really built as many schools as some of these larger urban areas. And, uh, you know, there's a big rural urban divide in this state. And, you know, the teachers, they, they want nice classrooms. I mean, they want nice schools and uh, efficient. And, and so that, that was a big issue. Right. Uh, testing was another one. I mean, there, sure. there, there's too many tests that are, that are forced upon students. Well, that and, seems to be a bi a, an, an emerging bipartisan consensus. I saw uh, Superintendent uh, Mark Johnson just yesterday pushed out uh, uh, sort of some more details on what he'd like to see. Let me, I want to dig into a little bit on this rural thing. I think y'all, um, the Public School Forum is releasing our top 10 education issues next week, and um, I'll give you a sneak uh, preview. One of them is going to be a focus on rural unique education challenges for rural North Carolina. Um, and then you mentioned safety. I guess you're talking about, there's a, that kind of comes a couple of ways. And you're talking about, uh, unfortunately, of course, the horrific shootings and things like that, but also just the facilities. So what, what do you mean when you say safety? What, what are you thinking about? Uh, making it a hard target. We, we just built a new school in Harnett County this past year, and, and there's only one way in and out. You have to, every visitor has to go through the office. All the doors uh, are locked so that no one can get in from outside. Uh, there's a card scan system that we use. The building can be completely shut down from one point, even a cell phone. And, and just try to look at those things, not, not to make it a fortress, but to make it someplace where people know sure. their kids are safe. Yeah, that, that makes it, I mean, I mean, when we were all growing up, I mean, we're, we're, we're at different ages, but I mean, we had breezeways and, you know, smoke. I mean, that's the kind of stuff now that you look at and go, unfortunately, we're in a different time. Yeah, I mean, back in the day, you could just walk right in and, you know, anybody could pick up students and that sort of thing. But now, I mean, now with just the, uh, the national noise is really making people more aware. And, and students, you know, I have a daughter, she's in middle school, 14 years old, and, and, and she gets scared yeah. some days. She, she, see, she watches the news and uh, she's, uh, she, she's in a good school. I mean, it's safe, but you just never know. Yeah, I understand. Let me, um, I want to talk about two of the things we just talked about with the, the representatives, teacher pay, um, and just sort of school resources and funding overall. I think the um, uh, Republican majority um, uh, is, is rightly proud of the investments that they've made in teacher pay. I'm sure y'all talked about that on the campaign trail. But sort of where are you? Do you think where we are where we need to be on teacher pay? And also, um, you know, North Carolina right now is ranked 39th nationally in, in per pupil funding. Do you, sort of where do you, I'll ask with you, Senator Bergen, where are you on that? Well, I've, I've looked a lot at teacher pay and, and the, uh, the State average right now is about 50,800. Um, 
I think there's a lot of things we can do. As I said, I, when I talk to teachers about pay, that is not the number one issue. I think if I think they're teaching because they love it. Teachers have never, teacher pay has never been uh, what I think it should be. I don't think it ever will be. The te you know, I admire teachers. Uh, because of great teachers, I'm doing what I'm doing now. Right. So uh, I, I want to continue to look at teacher pay. I'll give you an example, though, about how, how there's disparity. I, I serve as Central Carolina Community College Vice Chair. The average teacher pay in the community college is only 48800 and all of those folks have their master's degree in their teaching. Something else we ought to do is go back and pay the differential for uh, teachers that have their master's. So you would support reinstating the um, uh, master's pay I think supplement? We need to, I think we need to be continuously uh, encourage education. I want people to be lifetime learners. And I think by encouraging, I've got three children, two of them already have their master's. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think, uh, and I, I'm, I'm a, a, a totally supportive of being lifetime learners. Right. Uh, similar question to you, Representative Humphrey. The um, one of the unique challenges for rural North Carolina is the uh, property tax base and the local funding. And as I think y'all both know, that that supplemental pay. I didn't go in and pull all the numbers for your counties, but I can tell you it pales in comparison to what say a Wake, a Mecklenburg, uh, Orange can pay. Superintendents tell me that affects their ability to recruit teachers. Oh, it, it does. Uh, I, I think Lenore County maybe fifteen, eighteen hundred compared to what twelve thousand, fifteen thousand in Wake or something along those lines. Yeah. But it, there's a big disparity. Not quite that high, but yeah, it's, but it's, it's significantly higher than those. And we have several counties that have no supplemental pay. Yeah, and uh, you know, I, I visited a middle school this summer and they had Teach for America training there. Mm -hmm. So. That Teach for America is great for rural counties. It just doesn't really solidify the, the need for teachers because they turn over. Right, it's not a pipeline program, that, but they certainly have been, up, they've been a big, I'm sure, I know in your, your area too, that's been a, uh, yeah. a sort of a, a, a lifesaver for some of those soups. Yeah, we, we've got to figure out a way to retain teachers. And, and you know, there, there's more work to do, uh, no doubt about it. I mean, the, uh, the General Assembly last year made some strides, but, uh, you know, these, these folks take care of our kids, they train them, they, they teach them, and you know, we, we've got to make sure we, we take care of them. Senator Berger, you mentioned school choice, um, and that was a key issue for you and that you heard from your constituents. Do you have any cons concerns about um, accountability or transparency? Do you think we know enough about, let's, let's, let me give you one, uh, voucher program, it's the private school voucher. Um, do you think it's where it needs to be in terms of uh, oversight? I think a certain percentage of the tax dollar ought to follow the child, uh, whether they go into whatever, even even homeschoolers. I, homeschoolers spend a lot of money for curriculum and stuff sure. for their children. A lot of them don't want money from the government, though, because they think there'll be uh, strings attached. Usually. And, and, <laughs> and, and there are, but, but uh, in our county, the, the, the school that scored the highest in our county this past year was the charter school. And so, uh, you know, it's the only school that teaches Mandarin Chinese. Um, so I, I think we need to look at it. But yes, I think everybody needs to be held accountable. All right, I'm going to want to wrap up a similar question that I was asking uh, Representative Von Hafen at the end. Um, um, on the Senate side and on the House side, both leaders made some uh, very uh, positive comments about trying to work together across the aisle. Um, do you think we can do that? I think so. I, I think the, uh, the, the school bond discussion uh, is going to bring bring us together. Uh, I think the time is right to take a look at that. I know it's going to cost. We've got to figure out how we're going to pay for it. But we've got schools that are crumbling. Like I said, in Lenore County, we've just got a bunch of older schools that have they've been taken care of. They haven't been neglected, but they were built in the 30s. And uh, it, it's time to for rural North Carolina to, to be taken care of, I believe. Last word from you. Um, I, I think education you know, is, is really important. I think people need jobs. Uh, that's one of my big things is jobs in rural North Carolina. Um, I want to make a difference up here, and, and I think relationships are going to be the key to it. I've met with, every, well, this week I will finish meeting with every uh, uh, secretary, every commissioner. I met with the governor Wednesday, and, and every one of those cases I'm asking, what can I do to help? And, and what can we do to make a difference? Well, thank you both for being here. I hope you'll come back and see us, and, and good luck, and, and, and enjoy your time in the legislature. Do some good for us. Thank All you, right. Keith. Thank, thank you. you. After the break, this week's final word.